We are uh, ready to rock and roll, and I hope you are awake and with us. We were actually broadcasting so much yesterday, I, I did quick math in my head, and uh, we were here at the studio for about 15 hours yesterday. That's what we, we did. And so um, I was laughing about uh, talking about watching the rebroadcast, because we actually saw a lot of that, <laughs> because we were, we were still broadcasting. So there is a ton of stuff that we did yesterday. I'll be referencing that, so if you missed it, make sure you watch the rewatch or, or grab the course so you can catch up with what we've done. Last night, we had a blast. We went to a secret location, and we shot on location and did some uh, a sunset shoot and tried um, some things on location. And one of the things you mentioned earlier was that you can use um, you know, controlling the ambient light and, and using that uh, to shape new portraits. And somebody, I don't know who it was, somebody wrote in and asked if you could use the uh, ambient light as the key light and your strobe as a fill light. And we did that last night. We did a lot of stuff. And so we actually have um, four of my favorite shots from last night uh, that we took. And this is Jen. And so these are all using speed lights and ambient light. Uh, and the way that we did this, we actually used uh, the key light was, was our ambient light. But the flowers behind Jen here, they were, were really underexposed. And so we added a little bit of fill to her, a highlight on her shoulder, and lit those flowers with our speed lights. And so the key on her face was natural light. The, the, uh, the accents and the background was actually our speed light. So the lesson from this, and I think a lesson from a lot of what we're going to be doing today, is you don't have to always use your speed light as the main illumination. I think that if you just go in and, you know, if we would have tried on a shot like this where we said, you know, this is, we have beautiful, beautiful ambient light. And we, when we showed up to the location, we we're like, this is perfect. Well, you know, we don't really need any extra light for, um, to get some great photos here. And so, uh, you know, if you are in that situation, don't have a solution looking for a problem. That's, I guess, the thing. If you have a speed light and you're just dying to use it, if you don't have to use it, don't use it. Um, but in this situation, we did find out that we did need it to, to fix some of the background, to separate her from, the, from those uh, flowers, to add a little punch, to do some things. And so um, try to think of your speed lights as tools that can be used in almost any way possible. They can be main lights. They can be kicker lights. They can add light to you know, a flower or something uh, that just needs a little punch. They don't always have to be the source of illumination. They can, they can be added for, for little kickers and stuff. So that's what we shot last night. And uh, for those of you that missed it, those files are going to be up uh, later today. Is that right, Kenna? Yeah, they're later today. Um, the, the location shoot last yeah, night. Yeah, it should it was, be this morning. To this morning? Yeah. OK. Um, so they'll, they'll be up there so you can see those as well. All right, well, let's talk about today. What are we doing today? We are uh, going to be talking about modifying the light, shaping the light. Um, and so let me, I'm just going to walk over here because this, this photo over here is such a good example of this. And we've got this, this not speed light over here that we're going to be using later. But this is a good example of, um, this was shot 100% in studio using nothing but speed lights. This whole thing was, was illuminated with speed lights. And we were able to shape this light. We were added to a shadow here, some highlights here. There's, you can see these highlights on the cheek over here and on the shoulders. And uh, this is done with a, a basic, it's called a three light setup. And um, actually we had our main source of illumination was this, uh, you know, the side of her face using a soft box. We had this little kicker light for this highlight on her shoulder. That was light two. Light three was this little dash of hair light up here. That was light three we used to grid. And so we're going to be talking about those things today, how to, how to shape lights for subtle effects. And so if we took away any of the other two lights on that photo, uh, we wouldn't get the highlight on the hair, on the shoulder. It would just sort of fall flat. And so we're going to be talking about when you would want to use a softbox or an umbrella or uh, a, a grid or something like that. And so the, the rogue stuff we have, I can't wait to start playing with that stuff. Uh, as opposed to this light, this. This is also uh, all shot with speed lights. And it looks like it's just all natural light, which I sort of like to, to try to hide when I'm using speed lights. But that was shot um, using an umbrella, uh, just a, a bare flash, and then a couple of flashes to illuminate um, the, the back of this model. She was actually standing in a location that was really, really dark, surrounded by really bright sunlight. And so we had to illuminate her to match the surrounding ambient light. 
Um, and so that was also done in bright sunlight in Phoenix. So we found some shade and, and stuck her in there. And so uh, I like to shoot things where it doesn't look like I'm using uh, speed lights uh, too much. You know, I like to try to balance things out. And so those are two examples. And so we're going to be showing you both of those things. Uh, and we're going to be shooting outside today. We're going to be shooting uh, in the hallway. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. And then I'm also going to do a little uh, a mini workshop within a workshop about the qualities of light, the properties of light, the position of light, and how we can determine where to put all those lights. So that's also coming today. So yesterday was all the solid foundation, the exposure triangles of flash exposure and ambient light exposure. We're building on that today. So we'll reference this. If you've missed that stuff, make sure you watch those files that are posted uh, that we talked about earlier at Creative Live, so you know what we're talking about. So today is all about modifying the light. And so yesterday, getting light to be appropriate, the appropriate amount of light. Today, making flattering light and uh, making sure that we match the ambient light to the best of our ability. So that's what today is. And then tomorrow, more of the same. We're going to take what we uh, learned today about different light modifiers and positioning the light, um, building on the foundation of the different exposure triangles, and we're going to go through a bunch of scenarios. So that's what's coming tomorrow. But today, modifying the light. That's what we're doing.